What's up, man? So what do you make of LeBron? Like, I think LeBron's durability is undervalued. I think it's remarkable. What do you make of him playing at this level for so many years? Wow. You know, uh, what has he been eating so life? You know, the guy is. Did you take it seriously? No. I can honestly say. No. Uh, do you regret it? Yes. Uh, I do. You know, uh, putting the right stuff in your body early and making sure that you're creating those good habits. Like, for example, KG, he gets a massage after every game. We're literally late to the plane because he gets a massage. Every game. Every game. And so I didn't understand that. But then breaking my ankle and then breaking my fifth metatorsal, having three surgeries on one foot, it's like, hey, you should have started, you know, playing the good seeds so, you know, your body can get a good response. So, what, Let's go back to your first couple years in the league. So you make money, and the girls are there, and you're hanging. They're everywhere. No, let's just be honest about that. Yeah, they're okay. everywhere. So let's say, for instance, you came to L.A., and, uh -huh. and you were playing for the Celtics, and you come, and you guys beat the Clippers, and you don't play. It's Tuesday, and you don't play the Lakers till Saturday. Uh -huh. So Tuesday, you play, you play 21 minutes. Uh -huh. With Paul and KG, 19, 21 minutes, and you yeah. beat the Clippers. What would you do that we night? We smashed the Clippers. And what would you do that, that night? time? We smashed. We would, we would probably go have some fun. Like what? Um, I would have to say, you know, I like Rodale Drive. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there's a place called One Oak. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's popping there on yeah, Tuesday popping. nights. So you go. One Oak here. <laughs> yeah. One okay. Oak here in L.A. Yeah. So you go popping there till about four a.m. Yeah. We well, 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 the, cl the club closed at two. So okay. after parties. Okay. No after parties. Oh. So you'd go back to your hotel in Beverly Hills or wherever. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, the next night you had uh, Wednesday. What'd you do Wednesday? Wednesday, um, I probably got up and did a little workout. Yeah. But I'm tired. Sure. But, you were I, at one but I get up and do the workout. So that night, what do you do? That night, I go to a nice restaurant. Yeah. With friends. And what time do you go to bed that night? Depends. Okay, Thursday. D well, game's not till Saturday. You can go out Thursday. You know, well, we had practice a couple times, so we got practice here and there. You know, but uh, Thursday night. Thursday night. Um, Good time Thursday. I'm hanging again. I got to hang again because we don't have a game till what day? Saturday. Till Saturday. It's a TV game, national TV game early. Yeah. So Friday, you probably go to bed a little early. <laughs> Friday, I'm not playing no games, though. I, I, I eat, put the necessary stuff in my body. So, but I'm, my, my argument is you are a majority of the young players. Yeah. First three years in the league, first four years. Mm -hmm. Never made big money, never gone to stay. I mean, I never went to a great steakhouse till I was like 30. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. So you look back and you look at LeBron. Do you, so was KG the first guy you looked at and he, he, he was the first guy I ever looked at. Like as far as just, because I can honestly say he helped my career because of his worth ethic and the things that he did, because I just, I, I, I just wanted to be around him every five seconds. I wanted to do what KG did, get extra shots, you know, get in the cold tub. And so, you know, I had to build those good habits to even stay to play eight years. So give LeBron credit. Came out of high school. He's got tremendous habits. He has to. It last Tremendous habits. Okay. Uh, so the Dolan Oakley incident. So my takeaway was, listen, Charles has got his issues. But in the NBA, we always bang on players. The Marcus Cousins, Latrell Sprewell. But between Donald Sterling and James Dolan... Frank McCourt, owner of the Dodgers. Some of the worst people in sports are the billionaire owners. What were the players saying about the Dolan incident with Oakley? What was a player's perspective? When you text buddies, what were they saying about that? Well, we, we're for the players. I'm a player, you know, wrong, you know, wrong, wrong, right, right. I'm a player first. And when you sacrifice yourself for an organization – injuries, just so much. You got to right. be held accountable in so many ways. Um, I just thought that was bad for basketball. And you, and then you let the people see what's going on with the collecting the bargain agreement. You see that. You see the, the owners. The pettiness. Yeah, the pettiness that's going on, and it's bad for the game like, as a whole. Like many people insinuated that it, it's going to hurt the Knicks long term. Now, I, I push back on that because players generally want to get paid, and if the yeah. Knicks say, I'll give you max money, you'll go to the Knicks. Do you think it may have turned off free agents potentially? For sure. I don't want to go and work for somebody and play for somebody that feels some way that feel that way a type about a player. 
feels that type of way, I don't want to go sacrifice myself. I wouldn't dare play for an organization. You wouldn't. If I was a max guy, I wouldn't dare. That wouldn't be my choice. But you went to the Clippers, and Sterling was there, right? Or was he? Yeah, I, I, yeah he okay. was. Did he you was have, like on the departure. That's when all the crazy stuff was going so on. So did you have misgivings about going with Sterling? Um, I didn't know him. I didn't know that he was that crazy. You know, I seen him a couple times in the locker room. But did you talk to Doc about it? No, I don't really talk to Doc about a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you and Doc didn't get along. No, to a certain extent, it was like a love-hate relationship. You love to hate him? What do you mean by well, that? Well, it just it was like sometimes you're like, Doc, what are you doing? And then, you know, you got a guy like Danny Ainge who comes in and swoops you from Doc because, you know, uh, Doc is, you know, kind of hard on you. You know what I mean? So it's like Doc. Wait, you're saying so Danny kind of protected you Danny, from that? Danny was the protector of the Celtics. Okay, that's For Doc. sure. For sure. Okay, let's go. Serge Ibotka goes to the Raptors. And people are saying now Kevin Love is out for Cleveland and Serge Ibotka's in for Toronto. Boy, keep your eye on Boston, which I don't buy because their second best player is Avery Bradley. Uh. It isn't Al Horford. It's Avery Bradley. He out-rebounds <laughs> Al Horford, outscores him, and is a better defender. So I don't think the Celtics are going to beat LeBron and Tristan and Kyrie and Kevin Love and J.R. Smith. I don't think it yeah. happens. Do you think this Serge Ibaka to the Raptors tightens up the East? No. The players? No. No. Cleveland, when it's time to play, Cleveland will be there in the finals. Those teams that are in the East, are they battle-tested? Are they battle-tested? No. 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 Washington's never won. So we don't know. We don't know what they're going to do. We don't know what they're going to bring. We don't know what John Wall's going to do. We don't know what Kyle Light. We don't know. But we know what LeBron and them got got the offer and, and – (laughs) <laughs> They're bringing it. All these headlines yesterday, the Bleacher Report said, Raptors acquisition of Serge Ibaka puts Cleveland Cavaliers on notice. One of the things you talk about is battle-tested. I've, I've said this for years and years. I used to tell Bill Simmons this. Dude, uh, stop this regular season stuff. There's two seasons. Two. It's two sports. Two seasons. Yeah. There's a regular season and then the playoffs. So I want you to take my audience. When you were with Boston, Orlando, L.A., and you uh-huh. got to the playoffs – What's the difference between preparation, intensity, focus, playoff basketball to regular season? Take me to it. Well, first of all, the next day of the regular season, you got a book about this thick at your at your locker. For playoffs or regular season? For playoffs. So after- For that team, everything that that team does, plays, statistics, um, Anything you want to know, what Anything type of you gum they like to eat, like left hand, right hand, like he likes to go left, he likes to wink his eye, like everything. Tom Thibodeau has everything in the scouting report, everything. So it's a different mentality because now you know you're playing for something. See, in the season, everybody is so headstrong about numbers and, you know. Get their minutes. Get their minutes. That's why people love to see playoff basketball because everybody's – trying to play together now more community it's more community she'll Every- sacrifice to get the w yeah some team some teams will well it, it's <laughs> it when i look at cleveland and, and we've said this i always go to a number and all these eastern teams have losing records against quality teams boston washington chicago detroit they've all got losing records cleveland's got a winning record but i'll make this argument glenn davis joining us big baby davis 2008 nba champ for the celtics I think Golden State's going to have a reasonably easy time because, A, they might not face San Antonio, and I think Houston's a one-man team. You shut down James Harden. I think Portland right now is too Uh, guard-oriented. Utah's too young, as you said, battle-tested. Clippers are kind of a chemistry mess. Yeah, mess. I don't think Golden State is going to struggle. Do you? No, I don't think so at all. I don't think so. And KD won't let them struggle. I think he, he. This is all on his back now, and if he loses, if they loses, you know. But I, I think they're mindful of the moment, and it, it looks like an easy one this year for them. So you think it's Golden State, Cleveland, without yeah. question? Yeah, Mo, no, most definitely, most definitely. Kevin Love is now hurt again, and people have said that LeBron's whining more this year. Um, <laughs> I would make an argument that between Bosch and D Wade and Kyrie and Kevin Love, uh-huh. LeBron's in a unique historical situation. Yeah. Michael Jordan didn't face this. Neither did Magic, Larry Bird. One star for LeBron has been hurt virtually every year of his last seven. Every year. Do you think that weighs a little on him? It does. I think it does because how long can you carry the torch? 
how long can you carry the torch? Because you you need others around you. And him being hurt, I mean, him him dealing with people hurt all the time, you know, that, that mentally has to take a tear on him. Do players like LeBron inside the league? How do they view him? I like LeBron. I think he's a good guy. I think, you know, um, you know, he 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 he's walked the walk. And that's all I can, you know, that's all you can a guy who walks the walk, you gotta leave him alone. You know what I mean? Everything that he's done, he's done it. Like he's really went and done it. Everything he's accomplished. Do and players feel he is elevated? Because like I think golfers like Tiger, because golfer made everybody he made everybody richer in golf. Yeah. Is there resentment about LeBron getting too much press? No. No, thank you, LeBron. <laughs> because of you, we we you know collecting barber agreement and all that stuff. You know he, it helps. You know um, LeBron's a player and he represents all the players. You know what I mean. So I don't think nobody feels no type of way or or would, would get in the way of you know what LeBron got going on. How old are you now, by the way? I am thirty one. So you're thirty one out of the league, but be willing to play if some offer came. Well, I'm willing to play, but I got to be in the best shape possible and healthy. So. I can't offer no team nothing unless I'm healthy and in the best shape possible. Are you in the best shape possible? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, what are you, what are you not doing? Not at all right now. Well, you got money in the bank. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple pesos. So what's the what, what, what's the motivation? Would you rather just hang out in L.A.? Um, no. The motivation is right now my thing is just leaving your mark, immortality, any type of way. That's my motivation. That seems, like like you that's like right deep. I could be like you one day oh boy right? that's quite a you you're, pre- be on you're pretty you cool be now quite you gotta, a goal you know, you're pretty cool now. quite a goal I I, I might I think I, you should aim a little higher if you you, you think so <laughs> <laughs> all right we got to go Glenn Davis.